This is John Refrano, Senior Vast Trainer here for Boris FX with another episode in the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at lights, smoke, and grunge. You know, sometimes when you get a new set of plugins, it makes you go back and look at the old plugins and see how you could use them in interesting ways. And that's what happened here. I was trying to make this Dark Shadows title, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could animate somehow the arches in the background because they were just a little bit too static? And I thought, you know, there's a light in the picture. What if I added BCC stage lighting because it has this wonderful ability to add smoke to the lights? And I thought having smoke in the background would really, really help sell the shot. And so that's how I composed this. So we're going to use BCC lights with the smoke. We're going to use grunge for the titles. And then I'm going to make it pop a little with this uh, alpha glow. So let's get started. I want to start by showing you the difference between what we started with and you know, what I ended up with. Uh, so Vegas has the ability here to bypass effects and I'm going to select all and show you this is the media that's on the timeline, the raw media. Humble beginnings for such a nice title. Uh, just a grayscale image in the background and a white title, nothing more. And then with the BCC effects, wow, look at the difference. I mean, before and after. It's quite, quite drastic. So let me show you how I did this. And before I clear the project, I want to hit F11 and just show you the tracks. We have a background track here at the bottom, and that's our image. And then the smoke and lights is added in another track. And the reason I did that was because I didn't want the smoke and lights to replace the image. I want them to be overlay on the image, or I was overlaying the smoke and lights. And so we do that with an empty event. And then finally, I have the title on the top track. So we're going to create three tracks in our project. Let me hit F11 again to get us back to our project, and then we'll start. So I'm going to clear this, create a new project, take my arches, drop them down on the timeline, and they do not match the aspect as most images do not. So I will open up Pan Crop, and then just right click in the window and say Match Output Aspect. And that's really all you need to do. I do see there's a little bit of black on the sides here, so this image had some black on it, so I'm going to just crop in just a little tighter. That's it. I, th I don't think there's anything else I need to do with it here. It's positioned kind of where I want it. So now let's start to make the blue color, right? How do we get this color blue? Well, we use BCC Colorize. I'm going to open up the effects, and we'll go to BCC Color and Tone, and then select BCC Colorize, and click OK. And you see it's already uh, added this purplish color. And if we go down and look at the colors that are enabled, you'll notice that color 3 is on. And color 3 is that purplish tone. So I'm not going to do anything else other than just take that purple and make it a nice deep blue. Uh, and that's really all I want to do to this. A nice dark blue because the, the lights are going to lighten it up a bit. So let's uh, put it there for now. I think that's all I want to do with the background. So next, we're going to add our stage lighting to get our smoke. And you'll notice there's a little light up here, and that's the light that I'm trying to emulate. So I will insert a video track, and then I'll bring the cursor to the beginning and right click and say insert empty event so we can add the effect to an empty event. And then I'll click on the effects browser and we'll go over to BCC lights and add BCC stage lighting. So let me find lights here. Stage lighting's down at the bottom. And you'll notice it's already added one light to my scene. Now, let me launch something new in BCC9, which is the effects browser. I really like this effects browser. It gives you all of the presets, and, and they're on a blank window here because we added it to an, an, empty, uh, an empty event. But it gives me all of the various presets that I can go use. So lots of great starting points with BCC Lite. I'm just going to start with the default for now. Um, but you can see there's some really nice effects you can get with the stage lighting. So let me show you the basics of uh, these lights. In the light drop-down, here's where we turn the other light sources on. So if you wanted three-point lighting, you could turn the other two lights on. We're going to leave them for now. There's also a master intensity, which we're not going to use, because I'm just going to work with one light. Um, so let me open the source light. I'm going to bring the intensity way up for now. We're not going to use it like this. I'm going to bring it way up so that you can really see the dimensions of the light. So I can show you the important parts about this. One is the position. And I can just drag the on-screen indicator here to change the position. Or I can open up position XY. 
and I can drag it around the screen that way. I prefer the, uh, the on screen for that. And you could also do the position the Z so you can make it swing uh, backwards and forwards. And I'll just tip that just a little so you can see. Here it is pointing towards you and then shifting backwards. Now this light can be either a spotlight or it can be a point light, right? If it's a point light, now it's kind of like a, a flashlight pointing at you, right? A point of light. But we're gonna use a spotlight because we wanna have this come down across the scene. If you use point light, you can open up point light and have a couple of things to change here, but we made it a spotlight, so I'm gonna open up spotlight. And here are the main controls that we're gonna play with in spotlight. Of course, we need to know where the light comes from, so that's our position here. The other angle of this is the interest, this interest XY. So I can make this go up or down uh, and, and shine in any direction, right? So now you get to control the two ends uh, this end here and the end down here, and that's the interest. Then I can control how long the throw is, right? and that's the target. So I can make this target come all the way out or bring the target back. Um, and then the other thing I might want to control is this cone angle and the feather. So the cone angle can make a very wide cone or a very narrow cone. right? Uh, so those are really all the controls you need to know to get this lighting to look proper. And so what I'll do is try to position it so that it mimics the position of the light. Now this light is beyond uh, this arch here. So I'm gonna move this up in this direction, right about here. Uh, I'm gonna make the target go all the way to the end. And we can make the interest, I, I'm gonna save the interest for now. I think I'm just gonna leave that. And I'm gonna go back up and turn the um, intensity back to 100 because I really just want it to be at the regular intensity. Okay, so now let's go turn on the smoke because that's the effect I really want is the smoke here. So here's the smoke uh, and we'll, you can see how that smoke is looking kind of nice and I think I might want to broaden it a bit. So let's go back down to the angle, the cone angle and let's angle it out. Now you'll notice something very unnatural happening and that is the light is behind the arch but of course it's overlaid on top of the arch. And so we have a solution for that. We could mask this. One of the ways you can fix this is with a mask. Um, but we have a solution right here built into the plugin, which is the offset source. So as I move the offset source, it starts at a different position. So see how I can move that this way if you have a light that's behind a wall or something? So I'm going to move that back until it just starts right, yeah, right about there. And now I'll just take the interest and move the interest just a bit. There we go. So now I've got this really, really matching the arch quite well. And if I really wanted to get particular about not having it uh, shine on the other arch, you could put a mask on the other side uh, and, and do that. Okay, so now uh, let's RAM preview this and see how it looks. I'm going to hit Shift B. And this is, this is kind of the smoky background that I wanted. Um, this is working for me. I'm not going to worry too much about masking the other side for now. Uh, this really works well. So here it is. We'll play it back in real time. And there's your smoky background. Okay, now that we have the background done, we can move over to inserting our title. So I'm going to insert another video track, put my cursor back at the beginning, right click and insert text media. And now we'll start with our title. So I'm going to put dark shadows. And let's highlight that and look for a nice font. Um, I believe I used uh, traditional Arabic. Yeah, that looks about right. And probably around a uh, 36. So that's looking pretty good. And I make it bold because I'm going to put grunge on it, right? And I want the grunge to show through. So that's all I really did with the title. Just that simple white title will do. Now we'll go to the effects. And we're going to put BCC grunge on that. So that is in BCC stylize. And I go to BCC grunge. And we add that. Okay, now just so you can see it a little bit better, I'm going to solo this track. Right, that's going to turn off the background for now, so we're just dealing with this track. Um, I've had a couple of grunge tutorials before. I think you guys probably know how to use it now. We go to the textures and we find one that we like. I'm just going to down arrow across a couple of these. Of course, you could, once again, launch the effects browser. 
And that has some really nice uh, effects that you can put on right off the bat. We're not gonna use any of these, but I just wanted to show you again, I really love this effects browser. Uh, so let's, I think I like this second one here because it gave a little bit of texture, not too much texture. And then you'll know that in my uh, original, I had the color red. So I'm gonna turn color on, open up the color, and then we'll move down a little bit. And we'll just change this to the red. So I'm gonna move this up, move this more in the red. There's a nice dark red there for the shadows. I kinda, I kinda like that. Okay, and now we've colorized it. So I've got a texture, I've got a color. The other thing I like to add, if you've watched any of my tutorials, I really, really like, uh, in BCC lights, I really like this edge lighting because it gives a 3D effect. Um, so right away you get this nice 3D effect. I always come up and turn the highlights and shadows down. The highlight is this area on the right where supposedly the light source is coming from, and the shadow is the area on the back. And so I'm going to make both of these just two uh, in there. Come down to the shadows, make the shadows two, and that really tightens it up. Now, you can also change the color. So the highlight color here is white. So if we wanted to make it a little bit pink, so it wasn't so stark white, that might be a little bit more natural, just kind of a pinkish. Um, and that's all I want to do for giving the 3D effect. Uh, so let's look at what we have so far. I've got my dark shadows background. Um, I have the text, but it's just not popping. It's just not enough for me. I, I want that text to really easily be seen. And so I thought, what can I add to this to really make the text pop? And then I thought, what if we use the glow alpha edges? So I'm gonna open up my effects again, go back to BCC Stylize, and, uh, and pick on the glow alpha edges. And we'll add that. And that really makes it pop. I really, really like that. I don't think I have to do too much to it. Just maybe get the width a little bit smaller so it's not so uh, predominant. And that's about it. Let me do a RAM preview on that and show you what we have. So there we've got this nice smoke happening in the background. Um, we've got some little grunge in the title. You know, it's subtle, but you can tell it's just not a solid red title. Um, and then we've got the glow that really kind of sets it apart, this uh, BCC Alpha Glow. So I really like that. Let me hit the space bar. That's enough to kind of show you what's going on there, and you get a nice idea. Well, that wraps it up. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how you can leverage Boris Continuum Complete plugins in your next project. If you have any questions, you can follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or visit us at BorisFX.com for more Boris TV tutorials. Until next time, this is John Refrano for Boris Effects. Thanks for watching.